Welcome to this week's program of Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And today our program is Autism in the Digital Arts, and our guest is Engagement Director of uh, Bay Area Video Coalition, Mindy Aronoff. And the first thing I'd like to add about that is we are here on the air thanks to the Bay Area Video Coalition. So a million thanks to you, Mindy. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. First of all, we've got to ask Will, what's with your shirt this week? Funny you should ask that. This week's shirt is the USF basketball shirt. This represent it, it represents the USF Don's team. Their 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 basketball seasons their their basketball season starts next month on Friday, November tenth. Be there and 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 watch them in and watch them in action. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you about that, Will. Would you like to begin with Mindy and uh, start our program? First off, tell us about BayVac. Well, BayVac is 41 years old. We were originally funded to provide broadcast quality standards to storytellers who had been, well, kind of kept off the air. So um, the Rockefeller Foundation gave us the original seed money, and from there we just kept growing and growing and growing. Tell us about how you came to Bayback. Mm. Well, I wanted to tell a story as well. So I wanted to learn how to shoot and edit video, and I wanted to start as an intern. And I was 40 years old at the time, so that was a little unusual back then. I've been here 18 years. So um, the... I knew that this was a pathway. The BayVac internship was a pathway to learning how to edit. But then I just fell in love with BayVac itself. And I got such a rush from helping people tell their stories that I changed my career direction. Mm -hmm. And it's just been a wonderful, wonderful time. Tell us about your current duties at BayVac. Okay, so what, what I currently do is I help customers from museums and archivists and uh, universities transfer their old format video to digital files. So we do that. I don't actually do the work, but I manage the team that does. We also make videos for other nonprofits. And so Bayback Productions companies can hire us to tell their story and in fact, that's one of the reasons I know how long people will watch a video. It's usually 30 seconds to a minute of uh, arresting content to get somebody interested in watching your show. And then um, I also oversee all the marketing for Bayback and uh, public access, that which you are now a part of. So the being on television, we run that operation for the city and county of San Francisco. And then we also help people take classes. So that, that all those things are my world. Well, one of the things I think we should uh, discuss since the program is autism in the digital arts, how would you describe what the digital arts are? Yeah. Well, and it runs the gamut. Everything from you know, helping somebody out with their computer, mm -hmm. so help desk, to programming, like making an app for your phone, to creating a television story like you guys are doing, a, a program aimed at a particular audience. Uh, you can also retouch photographs. Photographs are mm -hmm. not dead in any means, by any means. We, uh, we are all in love with visual imagery right now, right? We scroll through our Instagram accounts and we um, take pictures of everything. Our feet, our, what we had for lunch, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, ourselves, you know, and, and now the technology is changing really rapidly. Virtual reality and augmented reality is 
coming right down the street and it'll be here in a minute. We're going to start teaching both of those things. And so, you know, if somebody could watch this show on their phone, for example, and maybe um, a flower blooms up right between the two mm -hmm. of you, you know, and so that's augmented reality. And, and how is storytelling changing with drones, for example? We are able to get a, a viewpoint that we've never had before. And it's also the first time a director can be in her own movie mm -hmm. by just commandeering the drone and telling it what to shoot. So it's pretty exciting times. Awesome. Can you t tell us, you gave us a little bit of an introduction, could you elaborate more on what some of the programs are at yeah. uh, BayVac? Yes. So we have a lot of different programs. You can plug in any way that you want. You can, if you are unemployed or underemployed, you can take our classes for free if you're eligible. And that's pretty exciting. We've helped, I think, over 1,500 people wow. find jobs that were either underemployed or hadn't been working for a while. We have a really vibrant youth program that's also free to the students and we won an award from the White House uh, and you can see on our website we have a picture of Michelle Obama uh, handing us the, um, the award for the best youth after school program. We were one of 12 across the country. And then um, if you are a full-time employee at a company that uh, participates with BayVac, you can take our classes for free. Wow. Yeah, so there's a lot of people here training um, under a lot of different methods. And mm -hmm. if, if you don't fall into any of those categories, you can become a member and get your classes cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, you can meet people in the industry. You can co find collaborators for your project. And really, it's a, there's a sense of community here that's multi-generational. So Mindy, uh, there are many uh, people on the autism spectrum in the community that um, want to express themselves. So does the digital arts um, have room for that? Absolutely, I mean, that's the beauty of it. And like we were talking about earlier, the spectrum goes forever, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's extroverts, introverts, and everybody mm -hmm. all the way down. Now, now, introverts tend to like working on a computer because you can create your own world there. And now you can broadcast your story globally. This is exactly made for people on the spectrum and everybody else. Jennifer, you'd mentioned that you wanted to discuss something. Yes, I'd like to hear a little bit more about this jobs program that you have. What exactly are the eligibility requirements, and then what kind of jobs are people landing in? Right. So the, the program is called Tech SF. It's funded by the Department of Labor and the WIOA program, which is federal, and we work with the city and county of San Francisco. So the government determines the eligibility and different programs have different eligibility. If you live in San Francisco, for example, that may make you eligible. If you haven't worked in six months, that may make you eligible. You have to be at least 18 years old and you have to be able to work in the United States. Now, what kind of jobs are people getting? It's just amazing. You can get a job as a PA on a shoot. You can get a job as a director on a shoot. You can get a job uh, <clears throat> retouching photographs. You can get a job um, helping out, c explaining a technology to the community. There's a lot of community um, advocates uh, that work with tech companies in particular because tech companies like to solve problems. So, but everything else that goes into a business, whether it's advertising, IT, um, uh, greeting, all of that, all of those jobs are available through this program, all the way up to programming with JavaScript and making websites, videos, um, podcasts, 
So, um, you know, we, we have career counselors that work with you, and what we do is we figure out what your strengths are, and then we maximize them. And we help you find a job through your own network. Typically, that's how people find jobs, through someone they know. And, and that is our mantra. And so we help you, especially if you're introverted or you have a hard time talking about yourself in a way that, you're, that makes you uncomfortable. We give you the tips to get over that hump so that you can express who you are to an employer. Excellent. In particular, how can uh, our viewers uh, learn about this particular program that you have here? Well, everything's on the website. And uh, we, I really appreciate you interviewing me about this because this is a classic case of BAVAC being the operator for this program and not using this platform to tell people about all the opportunities. Um, if you go to the Bayback website under Learn Tech SF, that's where you'll find all the information. You can apply right online, and we're going to ask for your resume. We're going to ask for your LinkedIn account. And if you have a portfolio, you don't have to have one, but if you do, we're going to ask you for the link to that. Excellent. One thing I'm curious about, obviously in the time that you've been here, there have been uh, tremendous changes in the technology. Beyond that, what have you noticed is the biggest changes in BayVac and what it does? Yeah. Well, we talked earlier about how people's attention spans are dramatically shortened. I mean, when I first came to BayVac, people were making hour-long documentaries bound for PBS, and that still exists. But now, you don't have to be somebody who went to school to... Uh, learn how to be a director necessarily. You can grab a camera and teach yourself. You can collaborate with other community people. And, you know, also when I first started, it was mostly people in their mid-20s. We are completely multi-generational now, and that just makes a world of difference. So we have people from 14 years old to 78 years old here telling stories, learning how to use video, learning how to cut video, and uh, the richness that comes out of that. Um, and, and that is one of the things where Bayback kind of pivoted. We've always wanted to level the playing field for people, but now we understand that storytelling has to be inclusive to be compelling. And that's why it's a beautiful, beautiful medium for anybody, but especially for folks on the autistic spectrum to uh, learn how to communicate and get the word out so that people can see we're all the same. So that means somebody can do, s would someone be able to do stand up too if they wanted to? do their routine that way, telling their story that way. Right? Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. We have a lot of comics that are coming okay. in here and practicing. Uh, uh, and then, you know, they can see how they did, and then they come back and uh, change their routine. Wonderful. Yeah. I'm going to share that with someone who's interested. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Will, you had something to add. Tell us about your, uh, tell us about opportunities for advocacy. Well, I think the, the more that people understand that we are all the same and we all want to do things for ourselves and be independent and be heard and be seen, that social media is the way to go. You folks have a program here. You can easily edit little parts and put it on social media to grab people's attention. and. We talked about, uh, you know, the organic way of, of having people follow you is the ideal. But truthfully, you may have to boost your post on Facebook with money. And that's what we do here at Bayback. And same thing with Twitter. If you, if you want to get a lot of followers, you have to either do something amazing so that it goes viral 
or you have to play the social media game. And that includes the way you describe your program or your story because Google's bots, Google's robots, search for certain words and they put those words, they put posts that have those words to the top of the page. And that's what search engine optimization is. And that's something that we teach here at Bayback so that you can get noticed. And once you are noticed and your story is told, people, you have to have a way for people to engage with you. So make sure that you say for more information or to donate today or to get involved or whatever your call to action is. It should be part of that very short message that is, again, I'm going to use that word compelling because we as, as human beings right now in the digital world, we're fascinated by what's on our phones, what's on our tablets, what's on our televisions, and everyone is watching and it's no longer um, impossible not to reach people all over the world in a matter of seconds. So there's a lot of room for advocacy, Will. Excellent. I'd like to follow up more, Mindy, on the distribution question. Um, I understand then that you teach classes here on how people may be able to increase their uh, viewership. And you told that you know, either you need to do search engine optimization or you need to put out some money, things like that. Beyond those, do you and the people here know of any particular underutilized channels that you would think would be good for our viewers who might already have some content that they'd like to distribute? That, yeah. What they, these should use? Well, okay. So I think YouTube, there, right now there's a race going on, right? Google, Apple, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, and Amazon all are vying for your eyeballs to watch content. I think Amazon is probably gonna win, but I think YouTube is just the, the standard out there. Mm -hmm. And so it's so easy to send a, a YouTube link to your video to your entire network and broadcast that on your entire network. And all your messaging should match each other in mm -hmm. some way so that people start recognizing, oh, that's that group. I like them. There was a guy on, Will, he was really fascinating. You know, and so you want to learn more about other people that are related to that project. So, you know, what we do here at Bayback is, and we do teach social media marketing as well. Mm, excellent. But so the, the, your message should be similar on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're talking about workforce. Uh, LinkedIn is where LinkedIn is to working what YouTube is to watching, right? So you just have to blanket that and don't expect people to see it one time. I read in a book um, called Guerrilla Marketing that the good news is it only takes people three times of seeing your message before they start to engage. Mm -hmm. The bad news is they only see it once for every seven times you post it. So you really have to post it 27 times for somebody to see it three times and engage. So Mindy, over the next few years, where would you say, first of all, BayVac is going? And then secondly, where would you say digital arts overall is going? I think digital arts is a part of everything now because um, it's the way we consume media. Mm -hmm. And the statistics are that by the year 2020, I think it's 80% of all internet traffic is gonna be video. Now, there was a time when BayVac thought we should change our name because video was less relevant but now it is extremely relevant. And what's glorious about it is that anybody can do this. Anyone that can pick up a camera and it, and it can be on your phone can create a story. This is a tool that is a medium for everybody to use. The accessibility is right there, it's immediate. And we wanna hear your story. Excellent.
Thank you. So thank you very much again, Minnie Aronoff. Uh, last thing, uh, once again for our viewers, what is the best way of getting in touch with the Bay Area Video Coalition, BayVac? Well, we're very web-centric, so go on to our website. You can also email info at bavc.org. I'm actually the person that reads that one, so I'll help you out personally. And come to one of our events. They're, they're full of wonderful people. When's the next one here in the San Francisco? Uh, you know, you, you caught me on the spot, but I know that we do have fundraising fundamentals coming mm -hmm. up, and that's always a popular one. Does anybody who wants to get enough money to finish their project, start their project, or hire actors, likes to know how do you fund this? And so that's please go to our website, look at fundraising fundamentals, and and uh, attend. Really good. Well, we look forward to seeing all sorts of wonderful things coming out of Bayback. And once again, thank you very much for allowing us to do this. Oh, my pleasure. We're so happy you're here. We are too. Thank we were you. glad to have you. Yes. Thank you, Will. <laughs> and now Jennifer Brooks will begin with our book report, a two-volume series of manga called uh, With the Light. Thank you, Keith. It's actually more than two volumes. I only brought two volumes ah. with me because the books are quite large. This is volume one. It has a blue cover. This is volume two. It has a green cover. The first volume is about the life of a child character named Hikaru, who was born with autism in Japan. This one follows from his birth to the end of first grade, so when the child is about seven years old. I'm not sure how the Japanese school system works, but I believe it's not so different in terms of ages from ours. Even though this is from Japan and Japanese culture is very different from American culture, it's almost mind-blowing how many things are the same, especially the prejudice that the mother faces. Throughout the books, she is constantly asked questions like, Why can't you raise your kid right? Or, Why won't you teach him to mind his manners? And then the burden is on the mother to explain that this is a brain difference. He was born with it, and he can't help it. So, there is one very important thing to keep in mind as you are reading these books and getting engaged with the story. This is an English translation from Japanese. The Japanese language is written right to left. And so the book is actually read from what we would consider the back all the way to the front, which may take some getting used to because it's different from what we have been conditioned and habituated to. And it is also a graphic novel, so let me just show you a scene. Ah. Now this is from a very important turning point in the city, I mean in the story. The special education teacher that he has had since the beginning of first grade is preparing to leave the school, and so that would be a huge adjustment for any student, but for a child who is very fixated on routine and on keeping things the same, no matter how trivial the change is, can't tolerate any change at all, this is, it represents a very serious crisis in his life. And now our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy, will give you the latest in uh, cultural activities in the Bay Area and beyond. Thank you. Hi. Well, what I'd like to share is uh, there is a Silicon Valley uh, Jewish film festival coming up um, starting October 21st, and it goes till November 12th. And um, it will involve a romantic comedy called Keep the Change, which is a 94-minute U.S. film directed by Rachel Israel, or Israel. Um, 
And the synopsis of this is um, a man with high functioning autism leads a very comfortable life until he's mandated to attend a support group for adults with disabilities along with others trying to navigate difficulties of relationships. The two dates that this uh, movie is playing, again, it's called Keep the Change, October 26th at 8.30 p.m. at the OFJCC, that's the name of the place, in Palo Alto. And Wednesday, November 1st, it'll be the same time, 8.30, at the AMC Saratoga 14 Theater in San Jose. For more information, you can call 1-800-838-3006 or visit the svhff.org website. Sunday, November 5th is a book reading with Anne Lord Davin, um, who is the author of Being Seen. She will be giving a reading at Fairfax, at the Fairfax Community Church, which is at 2398 Sir Francis Drake Boulevard in Fairfax, November 5th. And you come and you'll learn about her thriving in autism and her practice in Zen meditation. She's, she's very, her book is, you know, talks a lot about that. So in any case, um, you can meet Ann Lord Davin too on November 5th. November 10th, 8 to 10 p.m. will be the USF Basketball versus Long Beach Street, hosted by the SF Dons, San Francisco Dons, men's basketball. And um, they will kick off their season hosting at the, I believe they call it the Sobrato Sur Sobrat Center, or it first starts with War Memorial or something. But uh, I will give you the address just 2335 Golden Gate Avenue, 94118, the zip code. So yeah, this double leader event will start with, um, it will first start with women's basketball team hosting Cal Poly at 6 p.m. And again, the USF basketball versus Long Beach will start at 8 and it'll go till 10 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. For our final segment, we'll hear from John Hammond, our uh, Best Buddies correspondent. Thank you, Keith and Will, for having me on today's show. Um, Go ahead, Will. Uh, how how did you how how did you win your award? So how did I win my forty nine award? I got selected. So best buddies, thanks to me and Joan and Rustin, we did, wrote an interview and we submitted it to the forty ers and I was one of the five finalists that got picked for that award for this award. The court, with this award is the community is a forty nine community quarterback game. It's a community quarterback award finalist. I was a community quarterback award for this year. So I got to go on the field for the first game against the Panthers and get honored that way. Excellent. Wow. I understand you have some uh, other updates on uh, some Best Buddies events, John? Yes. Um, our big event that's coming up is November 10th. It's the Best Buddies Game Changer, which is $150 for tickets if people want to go. Uh, it's going to be November 10th, and it's bestbuddies.org backslash game changer. People want to buy tickets. Thank you. There's some other events that I understand. Are, no, okay. Uh, well, we want it at the best, at the game changer, he's getting another award. Oh, okay. So Ooh. we want it, 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 it may say, John, I understand you're getting an I understand at the game changing event, you are getting yet another award. Can you tell us about that? Yes, I'm getting the MVP of. Award for best buddies. So I'm helping them out with other events. Like so, so best buddies game changers coming up, November tenth. It will be in Fort Mason Center. If people want to buy tickets, bestbuddies.org backslash game changer. Excellent. And if people want to get involved with best buddies overall, what's they the would go to bestbuddies.org and they can sign up that way. Excellent. Well, folks, this is our episode for this week. Until next time, I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Stacey Kennedy. I'm John Hammond. I'm Mindy Erna. And I'm Jennifer Brooks. And we're Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. Be safe and be well. <laughs>